Hello everybody, this is Mr. Navarrete, and today I'll be going over the kinetics homework number two. So, let's get started. For one, it says, give the symbol an equation for reaction rate. What units are used to measure it? Looking at our equation, we start off with R. R stands for our rate. And our rate is equal to, that's a ratio. On the top, we use, or we have our change in concentration. It's supposed to be a delta, not an A. And again, that's our change in concentration. Because it's a ratio, we need to compare two things. So we are comparing our change in concentration over time. Delta T stands for our change in time. Now, what are our units that we're going to use for our rate? Since we're dealing with concentration, we always use molarity. So M for molar. And for time, well, that all depends on what you're working with. Sometimes you'll be working in minutes. Sometimes you'll be working in seconds. So always make sure that your rate corresponds to the time that you are using. For two, it says, suppose you're trying to explain reaction rates to a friend, and you're using an analogy with speed of an automobile on a highway. What feature about the reaction would be analogous to each of the following? For A, we have to compare the distance traveled by an automobile to our rate equation. When comparing distance to the rate of our reaction, we can think about our distance as how far we have to travel, or how much of something we have. What would be the best comparison for that? Concentration. Our concentration lets us know how much of our reactants or our products we have. Much like our distance tells us how far we have to go, our concentration lets us know how much reactant we have, how much product we are making. For B, the amount of time the automobile travels, well, time with our car is going to be the same as time in our reaction. It lets us see how much product we're making or how much reactant we are using at a specific time. Just like with our distance, we can see how far we are or how close we are based on the time. Lastly, the speed at which the automobile travels. Well, again, speed is a rate. We're comparing our distance traveled over the time. For us, it would be concentration over time. Speed would be the same as our rate. For three, it says, explain how you can tell from a plot of product concentration versus time without actually calculating reaction rates, whether the reaction rate is increasing, decreasing, or remaining constant. Our best indicator for the rate of our reaction using our graphs is our slope. When we plot our graphs, we can see these nice curves. While taking the slope of a curve might take some calculus, we can take the slope of a tangent line, so a line that touches our curve at just one point, and use that to measure the rate of our reaction. If we look at our rates, if we have a positive slope, then we see that our concentration is increasing. If we have a negative slope, then we can see that our concentration is decreasing. And if we have a slope of zero, then we can see that our concentration is staying constant. There is no change. For four, it says the concentration of a substance changes from 4.0 molar to 2.0 molar in 40.0 minutes is a substance of reactant or a product. I'm going to look at my concentrations. I start off with 4.0 molar, and then I end up with 2.0 molar. My concentration is going down. I'm going to assume that my substance is a reactant. How do I know that it's going to be a reactant? Well, in part B, it tells me to explain how I know. How do I know that it's a reactant? Well, let's look at our concentration. It goes from 4.0 molar to 2.0 molar. My concentration decreases and it would only decrease if it was a reactant. By going from 4.0 molar to 2.0 molar, I know that my reactant is being used up. See, so I express the rate of the reaction in molar per minute. So looking at my equation, my rate is going to equal my change in concentration over my change in time. I'm gonna write out change in concentration, and that's gonna equal my final concentration minus my initial concentration over our change in time. Looking at what was given from the problem, my final concentration was 2.0 molar. My initial was 4.0 molar. And my change in time was 40.0 minutes. Putting all of this into my calculator, I get a rate of a reaction of negative 0.050 molar per minute. Look at the negative. The negative lets me know that my concentration is decreasing. Concentration of my substance Originally was 4.0 molar, and now it goes down to 2.0, further proving that it is a reactant. For 5, it says, dinitrogen pentoxide decomposes into nitrogen dioxide 
and oxygen according to the following equation. If the change in oxygen concentration was found to be 2.5 molar per second, what is the reaction rate in terms of dinitrogen pentoxide? I was given the rate of my reaction for oxygen. So let's use our balanced chemical equation to convert it to dinitrogen pentoxide. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to have 2.5 molar per second of oxygen. My balanced chemical equation lets me create the ratio that for every one mole of oxygen, or I'm going to use up two moles of dinitrogen pentoxide. I get a reaction rate of 5.0 molar per second in terms of dinitrogen pentoxide. For six, it says ammonia reacts with oxygen gas to produce nitrogen dioxide and water vapor. Write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction. So I'm just going to write down what the problem told me. Ammonia reacts with oxygen gas. Remember, oxygen is diatomic, so it's going to be O2. They react to produce nitrogen dioxide and water vapor. Now we have to balance it. I'm going to plug in my coefficients, and you can double check yours with mine. For B, it says, at the instant when ammonia is reacting at a rate of 0 0.80 molar per minute, what is the rate at which oxygen is disappearing? I'm given the rate of my reaction for ammonia, but I need to find the rate of my reaction for oxygen. So I'm going to need my balanced chemical equation. Now with that, I can convert my rate of my reaction for ammonia using the mole ratios found in my balanced chemical equation to get my rate of my reaction in oxygen, which is 1.4 molar per minute. See, it asks, at what rate is each product being formed? We know the rate of our reaction in terms of ammonia, so let's convert that into each of our products. In order to do that, we're going to need our balanced chemical equation, and then from there I can just convert the rate of my reaction for ammonia. I can use my balanced chemical equation to create a mole ratio. It tells me that for every four moles of ammonia, I'm going to create four moles of nitrogen dioxide. So I'm just going to write that here. Plugging that into my calculator, I get a rate of a reaction of 1.0 molar per minute in terms of nitrogen dioxide. I'm going to do the same thing, but now for water. I'm going to take the rate of my reaction for ammonia. I'm going to use the mole ratio, as it tells me that for every six moles of water, I'm going to use four moles of ammonia. I'm going to plug that into my calculator and get a rate of 1.2 molar per minute in terms of water. For seven, it says ammonia is formed from its elements according to the equation below. One mole of nitrogen is mixed with one mole of hydrogen in a one liter container. After 5.0 seconds, the reaction is stopped and the gases are remeasured. There are 0 0.90 moles of nitrogen and 0 0.70 moles of hydrogen. Calculate the reaction rate in terms of each reactant. So let's start off with nitrogen gas. I'm going to find the rate of nitrogen gas using my equation, change in concentration over our change in time. One thing to note, they tell me how many moles of nitrogen I have, not my concentration. So I need to make one quick change to convert moles into molarity. Luckily, they tell me my volume, that it's one liter. Now with that, I can say my final concentration was 0 0.90 molar, my initial was 1.0 molar, and the time that it took was 5.0 seconds. And that gives me a rate of negative 0 0.020 molar per second in terms of nitrogen gas. Now let's do the same thing, but for hydrogen gas. My rate for hydrogen gas, again, is going to be my change in concentration over my change in time. Again, they give me the number of moles I have, not molarity. I need to change it into molarity first. After doing that, I was told that my final concentration was 0 0.70 molar, my initial was 1.0 molar, and the time that it took was 5.0 seconds. So I can get a rate of a reaction of negative 0 0.060 molar per second in terms of hydrogen gas. Now you didn't have to do all of this second part because you can use your mole ratio. My balanced chemical equation tells me that one mole is going to react with three moles of hydrogen gas. So if I wanted to find my rate of my reaction and convert from nitrogen gas to hydrogen gas, I could have simply just multiplied this one by three. 
and the results would have stayed the same. Eight, it says dinitrogen pentoxide is decomposed to oxygen gas and nitrogen dioxide gas. A, write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. So I'm just going to write down what it told me. Dinitrogen pentoxide decomposes to oxygen gas and nitrogen dioxide gas. I'm going to write in my coefficients and you can double check yours as mine. For B, it says calculate the rate of this reaction if 0 0.0021 molar oxygen gas is produced from 0 to 600 seconds at a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. We're not going to pay attention too much to the temperature because the rate of our reaction doesn't entirely depend on our temperature. Our temperature can affect whether it speeds up or slows down. However, the base rate of our reaction is going to stay the same regardless of the temperature. So I'm going to find my rate using my change in concentration over my change in time. Putting this into my calculator, I get a rate of 4 times 10 to the negative 6 molar per second in terms of oxygen gas. C says, assuming the rate of this reaction is doubled with every 10 degrees Celsius or Kelvin increase in temperature, how long would it take to produce 0 0.021 molar oxygen at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius? So let's look at our rate of our reaction. At 50 degrees Celsius, it was 4 times 10 to the negative 6 molar per second. So if it doubles every 10 degrees Celsius, that means at 60, it's going to be 8 times 10 to the negative 6, 70, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 5, and we can continue doubling until we get to 100 degrees Celsius, which gives us a rate of 1.28 times 10 to the negative 4 molar per second. Now we want to find our time. If we look at our equation for rate, we can find our time just using some algebra. We could say that our time is going to equal to our change in concentration divided by the rate of our reaction. So when we plug in all of the information that we have, we know that we want to make 0 0.0021 molar and that our rate at 100 degrees Celsius is 1.28 times 10 to the negative 4 molar per second. Plugging this into our calculator, we get a time of 16 seconds. This is where we can see the effects that temperature has. As we increase our temperature, we allow for more collisions to happen. So while before at 50 degrees Celsius, it took 600 seconds, now it only took 16 seconds by raising it to 100 degrees Celsius. And that's it. If you have any questions, don't forget to message myself or Mr. Morgan on Schoology. Other than that, stay safe and I'll catch y'all next time.